Hey everyone, so I just launched this free template for Material UI that shows you how to build this dashboard and login and homepage and other types of components and everything. And one of the concepts that we use a lot in this template is the Material UI grid component. When you're building React apps, you're going to want a strong library to build under. And for that reason, I choose Material UI. I think the components and technology inside of Material UI allow you to build some really amazing apps very quickly. And the grid technology that's behind all of this has only matured and gotten easier and better to use with these libraries. It started back in you know, 2012 with Bootstrap coming out with their grid and responsive technology. And since then, uh, that's really taken over in terms of thinking about things in terms of columns rather than just laying things out flat along the document. So this technology, as I, as I show here in my template, uh, is downloadable. You could download this for free. And we're going to talk through how Material UI works in terms of grids and how you can use it and take advantage of it in your apps. So we're also going to talk about our blog post here called Material UI Grid Component. So we're going to talk through how you can use the Material UI Grid Component to actually build your own grids and how they work in our app as well. So we're going to show you a couple examples in our app. We're going to show you a much simpler example that you could find on our blog with just a couple of simple Flexbox examples to get you understanding how the technology is implemented under the hood. So, and then we're going to end with just just showing you more about how Material UI works with how to implement uh, these grids using specific uh, React props. Let's get started. So we're going to go here and show you first the Material UI grid. So this is the component that we're talking about. Grid is a Material UI component. And like I said, it uses Flexbox under the hood. Uh, what it looks like, it looks like this. So you see here it's got you know, it's a grid component with some props that you enter in here. And basically what this is, is it's a Flexbox container under the hood and then a Flexbox item under that. And so you can implement Flexboxes by yourself without using this library. But what it does is it gives you a lot of helpers that you wouldn't be able to get with just Flexbox alone. And so for that reason, it gives you uh, some some nice responsive breakpoints to work with. And those are really great as we'll show in our um, own app here. As you could see, you know, the login page is going to be responsive as I collapse. And then we're just gonna show you that and then also just some examples on, on our blog here. So let's go ahead and first kind of roll it back in here and say, well, what is Flexbox, right? So, you know, if you look here, this is the official spec for Flexbox in the link, we'll link this below as well. And this really just tells you what Flexbox is and how it relates, you know, not necessarily the, the implementation, but you know, this is the, this is the spec that you should be implementing as a browser. And so the key thing here that you want to learn is flex container is the box and then flex items are the children underneath that. So you've got a parent and then you've got children underneath that. And that's the basics of Flexbox. When, when you do that, you need just say display flex on a parent. What happens there is the, uh, the items underneath that parent. So you can see here, we can go to example one, you go to the examples and click example one and collapse this. You can then see here, all we're doing on the container is just saying display flex. This is material UI style, by the way, if you're not familiar with this, it uses uh, JavaScript to specify the CSS properties. So here we have just that container display flex and then the items are the only thing that's on them is the blue outline just to get a sense of what's actually happening here. So this is a basic flex box. And now let's say you wanted to increase the items here, increase the item width. Well, what you could do with that is you could use the flex grow property. And so if we go here to uh, the spec here for CSS grid, you can see here we have under flex shorthand, we have uh, the property here, flex grow. Now flex shorthand is a way to specify a bunch of other properties at once. So you could specify the flex grow, the shrink, or the basis all at once. And we're only gonna talk about flex grow and flex basis today, but flex grow is basically uh, the flex grow factor, which determines how much flex item will grow relative to the rest of the flex items in the flex container when positive free space is distributed. 
Now, when it says here, when omitted is set to one, that's actually incorrect, it's set to zero. And I could show you that if we go to Mozilla, we have here flex grow, and we could see here that flex grow defaults to zero. Now, what this means is when we go here to the example that we'll show, so in the example, we have no space being used, right? We, this whole container is taking up this whole width of this whole uh, section here, right? But when we set flex grow, let's go here to example two, when we say flex grow to one on a component, which we'll do on the second one here, that component takes up all the remaining space that it can because the other ones have flex grow to zero, so it does a ratio, right? If I had another one here, if I just, I could show you this real quick, I can copy this component here, paste it here, and then what happens then is two components are taking up the remaining space. So they both have flex grow one. I could change one to have flex grow two and the other to have one, and that would take up twice as much space. It'd be like a 66%, 33% if I did that. So that's kind of flex grow in a nutshell. Now sort of move on to flex basis. So we have flex basis here. Now flex basis is gonna set the initial main size of the item before free space is distributed according to the flex, fla uh, flex factors like CS, uh, like <laughs> according to the flex factors like flex grow. Okay, I'll say that 10 times fast. So we have normal flex box with 33% flex basis and 33% max width. So what this is, let me go here to example number three. Now you might be wondering, well, why did you, what are you setting flex basis and max width for? What's the significance of these two properties? And I wanted to share with you that those are the properties that Material UI's grid is using under the hood to set the, um, so what are they setting, right? So let's look at Material UI's grid for a second. It's a very short file. It's only 400 lines, most of it's prop types. But basically, as you can see here, they provide an option for auto layer layouting. We're not going to touch on that right now, but basically that, that allows you to set one of the children to take up the available space like we showed. And then the other one is flex basis and max width. Now this is kind of the magic um, here in this whole grid thing. This is taking a breakpoint value, like whatever tablet, phone, whatever your width of your device is, that determines the breakpoint. And then it uses the breakpoint values that you set to determine the column width. And what it's gonna use for that is the flex basis and the and the max width here. So it's gonna divide um, the size you know, by 12, because it's gonna do 12 columns. And then it's gonna approximate what the width of that column should be. So if you have a four column layout or a three column layout, you want to have that take up 33% or 43%, right? Or if you have two columns, it's 50%. And so that would be the percentage here that they're setting. So you put that into the flex basis. And what happens when we do stuff like that, when we use the flex basis, what we're doing is we're setting those widths. So we're saying, I want all of these to be 33% flex basis and 33% max width. So we're also setting max width because um, the max width uh, would prevent it from collapsing. So flex basis is just as the default kind of main value before they are squashed or expanded, depending on if others have sort of a flex grow or something in there. Um, and so, yeah, so what that's going to do is just allow you to just demo, you know, you could see exactly what we're doing here, example three. So it's not like we're set, we're, we're implementing this grid with a lot of new technology. Material UI is just using Flexbox properties out of the box. So now let's finally go and talk about Material UI's grid again. So we just learned a little bit about Flexbox and Flex Grow and Flex Basis, right? What you can also get out of this is spacing. So they're gonna allow you to help, you know, specify the spacing uh, values in between each grid, grid item. So let's go ahead and talk about the terminology. So Flexbox we talked about is just a div, right? We were just using divs there with basic CSS. Here you need to use a grid for both the grid item and the grid container. Now you have to specify a container and or item on your uh, grid because you need to um, take advantage, that kind of signals to Material UI that you're using a item or a container. And they do their own uh, styling based on whether it's a container or an item. For example, they saying it's a container will set the display flex property. That turns it into a flex box. Flex item is going to do some other things like set the margin to zero. 
by default and have box sizing equal to border box, just like the container. So that's how you sort of create the grids in Material UI. Now let's talk about the responsive breakpoints. So if we go back to our blog post here, we have we just talked about this, the properties of Flexbox. So now we can, we're gonna talk about the breakpoints. So we have XS, SM, medium, large, and XL. So these are the breakpoints in Material UI by default. You can update these if you want. But what this says in the context of grids is, when I say XS equals six, so it's a 12 column layout. What that's saying is I want this to take up six columns uh, or I want this to take up so yeah, six columns on all devices. And it's going zero pixels up until all devices. So it's up. It's like anything greater than zero pixels is gonna get this amount of columns. If you omit the um, property here, if you, if you don't say any, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves with that, but let's say here, this is an example of that, right? XS equals 12. So if you omit this property here, if you just say XS, it'll be true, and that'll make it grow to as big as it needs to go. That's setting flex grow is, is equal to one. And you wouldn't really know that, but just saying XS as true, that's what that does. And we could go here and look at the API. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but this is the grid API here, and we have all of these properties listed here. So when we go to XS, we see, um, this also has the ability to say true or auto, right? So XS is gonna, so either way, these are the breakpoint values here, and you could specify these here, so you could specify like any number of columns, and it's gonna go up. So what we do here in our example, if we go back to the responsive uh, grid example, you have, here we go, number four, you see here we have this grid. And what this is saying is XS12, SM6, medium, Three. And so I write out the definite, like what's going on there. So let me just collapse this if I can figure it out. So from zero pixels to 600 pixels, I take up 12 columns. Then th because this is overridden in the next uh, device width, right? SM, what happens then is we say six. So then we want it to take up, so let's see, we're on our small device, right? It takes up 12 columns. That's the full device width. Next, we stretch it out past 600 pixels and we get the next breakpoint. So we say SM6, which is half of the device because six columns is half of 12. So then we do three, which is 25% and that's medium devices. So on medium devices, it goes to four. And this is a common use case, right? You want something, let's say you're doing pictures, right? You want to, when you go past a certain width, you can't fit four pictures side by side anymore. So we go to two columns. And then eventually on mobile devices, you are only going to want this to take up one row for each uh, item. And so that's a gist. That's how you do this. So that's the general breakpoints, how that works, how that sets the, the device, uh, how that controls what happens on each device width and how many columns that's setting on each grid item. So this is the grid container. Once again, specifying container makes it a flex box. And then, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how this works in the context of our dashboard app. So as you can see here, we have a sign-in uh, modal here. Now this is using the Justify Center prop. This, set, this sets the Flexbox Justify Content prop. As you can see here in the API, the justify prop defines the justify content property of Flexbox, and that's gonna center the, the grid here. So then you have a grid item. Now what we're doing here is we're saying on medium devices, we want this to take up five columns, which is five twelfths, right? It's, a, it's sort of almost half, right? It's a five out of 12 is, is not quite half the whole width of the device, but it's like one, it's five out of 12. So I don't know what that is in percentages, but as we go down to a small device, we're gonna take up eight out of 12, which is four sixths or also two thirds, so 66%. So as we go to a medium device, we now take up 66%. And then as we go to a small device, 12, can you guess what that's gonna be? 12 out of 12, is the full width. So as we go to a mobile device, we're gonna take up the full width. So this is the grid template. You could download this below and you can see how we use a lot of different other types of grids. So I hope this lesson was helpful for you and helps you to get a little bit more understanding of how the Material UI grid works. Thanks.